Congratulations! We found that perfect home for you. This home checks off every single box that you have on your needs list. The kitchen is awesome. The garage is big enough to fit your cars, your tools. Your kids are already running around picking out their rooms, decorating them and everything. This is exciting times for you and your family. Now it's time to present that offer. So let's talk about how you can save some serious money when presenting that offer. My name is Steve Arthur. I am a local realtor here in the Long Beach and the surrounding city. I make weekly videos about Long Beach living in and really, really cool things about all the surrounding cities, uh, LA, everything. So hit that subscribe button, ring that bell for future notifications because I will be putting out these videos every single week for you to enjoy. Now when presenting an offer, this is a critical phase which is typically done wrong by most agents. Now as much as possible, I will meet with the sellers, I will meet with the seller's agents, I will try to have dinner with them. So I will sit down with them at the dinner table to do a personal presentation on your behalf as your agent, as your advocate. They will naturally ask throughout the conversation, so who is going to be buying the home? Now, within federal and state law of what I can and what I cannot say, I will promote you, I will pump you, I will make you look like the best thing since sliced bread. I will make them just feel that you are the most amazing house buyer that there is for their home. Now, when a seller decides to sell their home, it's a business decision on one hand, but it's also a personal decision on the other. Because after all, business is personal, isn't it? They may have had their kids grow up in this house. They may have had their spouse pass in this house. They have had a lot of memories in this home that they are unwinding as they are getting ready to move on. So even if they're getting ready to downsize, maybe they might be moving in with their children now, or moving into a 55 year old plus community if they're at that phase of their life, or perhaps just getting out of California, moving to a, a different state for their retirement reasons. They still have had a lot of memories in this home and they are very interested in who will be buying it. Remember, it's not yours yet until they sign all the paperwork and hand over those keys. Now, by presenting this offer in this certain way, I have saved my clients thousands and thousands of dollars over the years because I've made a good case. Had that offer just been emailed over with no personal attachment, no connection, it probably just would have been rejected. But because now they have a connection with that offer. Also, what I do is a little secret here too, is when presenting that offer, I have you, the, home, the new homeowner, write a personal letter, what you fell in love with about the house. We take pictures of your kids running around the house, picking out the rooms. I include those things. You write a very, very detailed letter. They're emotionally connected to you and your family. Makes my part a little bit easier too. And a lot of agents just won't set up this dinner thing. And I don't know why. It's just old school, face to face. Let's talk, let's make everybody happy. That's it, and it works. And after all, business is personal. Now there's that old saying, you attract more bees with honey than you would with vinegar. And that brings us on to point number two of negotiating the price. Now, everybody's got their own different ways of doing it. There's a lot of different ways of doing it. A lot of people feel that if you just go in and just hard hit it and beat them up and just do this and that, boom, you're gonna get what you want. It doesn't quite work that way here. Not at all. For starters, you do not want the homeowners to be defensive about their home. So when you do make an offer and it is a little bit lowball, they're not really angry. Them getting defensive and angry, what's that gonna equal? A rejected offer with probably not even room for a counter offer. So you position yourself correctly and then negotiations correctly. A lot of times when you do open up negotiations, it can lead to anywhere. 
Did you know that you can get paid? A lot of times when the people move out, they ask for an extension or whatever, hey, we can't move out by this day. It's taking a little bit longer than we anticipated. We're gonna need an extra 30 days. Well, you can charge them rent because at that point it's your home. So you can make two to $3,000 that month if they have to prolong them moving out. It's little things like this. Now that could be a little annoying, a little hassle, but it's also two to $3,000 in savings. Yeah, you can do the math. And do you know that when people deal with large sums of money, a couple hundred, two, three, four, five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars, they can get pretty emotional. Yeah, they can. Because let's face it, the sale of one house can really make a left turn or a right turn on how their retirement years are treated, uh, what their life plans are going to be doing. It can really affect their life. And they can get really, really, really emotional. And that's where an agent like myself comes in to come in and lower the stress. And hopefully the agent on the other side does the exact same thing. So you have two parties with stress free now. Now the two agents will act amongst each other to act as a buffering zone so that the two parties on the outside, the sellers and the buyers do not clash. We use the language of diplomacy, language of negotiation, very professional. Remember, realtors do not want to piss off other realtors. I know for a fact, there are a couple of realtors out there I do not want to work with again ever, and I will not work with them again. I will not work with their agency again because I know how they participate. We've done deals where it's just gone wrong. Now, if I've done the same thing to somebody else, I'd be in that boat too. My broker would be getting a phone call saying, hey, he's a slacker. He didn't do this. He didn't do that, which I would expect too. So when agents don't act that way with me, or they try to take absolute control, they just boom, 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 boom. Doesn't work that way. I'll never work with you again. I'm gonna even write a stern letter to your boss. So these are all the important things that do weigh in. Our job is to relieve the stress for you when you're dealing with such large sums of money. A lot of times if the agents can discuss and rationalize and make for one side or the other, we can lower the frustration, the anxiety, and make people be rational. Just think about it, having to make a $100,000 decision in 48 hours, you would be fried. Your brain would be going nuts. You, uh, left, right, left, right, which way do I go? I don't know. And that's where I come in. I am your advocate. I am there to help. I am there to make sure a deal gets done in such a way that you are happy repairs. Well, here in Long Beach, California, you're always going to have termites. So that's just a given. And then you're going to have the older dwellings with the older pipes. So that's pretty much a given too. So these are things that are critically important. Now, when that homeowner is selling you that 40, 50, 60 year old home, they know that there's some deferred maintenance into that home. So if you're not dealing with a professional agent who can interpretate what the inspection report says, who can discuss it with the other agent and seller, because sometimes it can become a major issue if it keeps getting pushed and pushed. That's why you get on this within the first 10, 14 days. So a lot of times it might be a major issue that will blow the deal apart. Whereas within the first 10 to 15 days where you can make a final decision or just ask for your money back. And if you're gonna be asking for your money back, there better you better state a pretty good case as to why you want your money back. So just on repairs, I've seen flip and flop ten to fifteen thousand dollars just because of a good case was prepared for it. So this is where a professional agent like myself comes in. Not only do we present the offer, but we negotiate the repairs, the price, the terms. Now with everything here discussed today, all weighed in, put down to the bottom line, nuts and bolts, I can save you between ten to twenty thousand dollars versus you trying to buy your home yourself. And not to mention the legal hassles of maybe you did something wrong, which is very critical because contracts, a lot of money equals emotions, which equals lawsuit. Perfect recipe. So congratulations, you found that dream home. So let's position yourself correctly, present the offer, negotiate price and terms, and negotiate the repairs too. 
so you can feel at the end of the day, my realtor kicked ass for me and you won. Again, my name is Steve Arthur. I am a local realtor here. I hope you found this video useful, enjoyable, and got a little information out of it. Please feel free to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell for future notifications. I will be putting these out every single week. Get in touch with me if you need anything of the real estate needs. Take care. Till next time. That's all, folks.